we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus and also the average value of a function. So what does the fundamental theorem of calculus say? Well, obviously, it's a very important theorem, right? Just by the name, you can tell that. It says this, suppose f is a continuous function on an interval a to b. If capital F is an antiderivative of f, then the integral of f is equal to that antiderivative of f when you plug in b minus the antiderivative when you plug in a. Now, let's remember, what does this notation mean here? The integral from a to b of f of x dx. This means the area underneath the curve of f and above the interval a to b. Now, that would be if f is a positive function. If f is sometimes positive and sometimes negative, we're talking about the net signed area between the graph of f and the interval a to b. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the way that we can find that area is by doing an antiderivative, okay, finding this capital F and plugging in B, plugging in this top endpoint, plugging in A and subtracting. Okay, now there's a notation that we sometimes use for this. Sometimes this is written F of X evaluated from A to B. Okay, so this notation here with this line, this vertical line, this just means F of X evaluated from A to B. So we plug in B, plug in A and subtract. Now I sometimes write it like this. We write F of X and I put it in like little brackets like this from A to B. And again, this just means f of b minus f of a. Okay, so let's use the fundamental theorem of calculus to do an example. What is the integral from negative 2 to 3 of x squared plus 1? Now, before we use the fundamental theorem of calculus, let's ask ourselves, what is this question even asking? What does it mean to do this integral? And what it's really asking us to do is to find the area underneath this function, x squared plus 1, above the interval from minus 2 to 3. So in other words, what's the area of this region here that's shaded in blue? What is the area? Okay, I put in a grid now here in Desmos. The question is really, how many square units is this area? And notice here's like one square unit. Here's another square unit right there, another one. We have some partial uh, square units that are shaded in. What is the total area of this region in square units? That's what this integral is asking us to find. Okay, so how do we find that area? Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus says we need to find an antiderivative of this. So this is kind of like our lowercase f in the theorem. Now we need to find our capital F. What's the antiderivative? Well, we have x cubed over three plus x. Now you might think, well, don't we also do a plus c? Well, we just need some antiderivative. We don't need the general form of the antiderivative. The fundamental theorem of calculus just says this will work if you pick any antiderivative. So we don't need to put the plus c. You could put in the plus c and that would be fine, but the c's would end up subtracting out. So notice we have this antiderivative. This is our capital F of x and we're going to evaluate from minus two to three. What that means is we're going to plug in three everywhere we see an x. And then we're going to subtract what we get when we plug in negative 2 everywhere we see an x. And if we evaluate this, well, we get 27 over 3, that's 9, so 9 plus 3 minus, well, this is going to be negative 8 thirds minus 2. And so what we get is 12, and this is really plus 8 thirds and plus 2. So make sure to put this part in parentheses here. So what we have is 14 plus 8 thirds. And let's get a common denominator. So 14 is the same thing as 42 over 3. So we have 42 over 3 plus 8 over 3. That's 50 over 3. That is the area underneath that function, the area of that blue shaded region. Now this is actually 16 and 2 thirds. So 16.6 repeating is the actual area of that region. So that's the answer. That is the value of this integral. And it's always good to check to see if that looks reasonable. You can start counting up these uh, square units here and we have partial square units. And it turns out, yeah, it's pretty reasonable that the area here could be around 16 or 17. It's 16 and two thirds square units. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. It tells you how to calculate a definite integral, which is an area or a net signed area between the graph of this function and the x-axis. 
And it says that the way that you calculate it is by doing an antiderivative. So notice we have the same notation that we had for indefinite integrals. This is a definite integral, but indefinite integrals meant find the antiderivative. Definite integrals didn't mean find the antiderivative. A definite integral means find the area. But the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the way that you actually find the area is by doing an antiderivative and then plugging in the endpoints and subtracting. So you always plug in the top one first, and then you subtract what you get when you plug in the bottom one. Okay, now what is the average value of a function? Well, the average value of a function, f, on an interval a to b is defined to be, well, basically it's the definite integral of a to b divided by b minus a, the length of the interval from a to b, that's b minus a. So in other words, you do one over b minus a times this definite integral or the definite integral divided by this length. So let's look at an example. Find the average value of this function that we just looked at on the interval from minus two to three. So let's go back to Desmos here. Notice this function takes all kinds of different outputs if our inputs are somewhere between minus two and three. Now, what is the average value of those outputs? Notice we have some outputs that are way up here, close to 10. In fact, at the right end point here, we get 10. We also have some low outputs down here. This is an output of one. What is the average value of the outputs? Now, what this is essentially saying is find the value, find the height of this red line that will make this red rectangle, this red shaded rectangle, have the same area as the blue shaded region. So notice I can put adjust the height of this output value here. I wanna adjust it so that the area of the red shaded region is the same as the area of the blue region. Now notice if I put it way up here, the red rectangle is way bigger in terms of area than the shaded blue region. If I put it down here, this red rectangle, the area of that's much smaller than the area of this blue region. So how can I find this kind of happy medium where the area of the red shaded region is the same as the area of the blue shaded region? Oh, and by blue shaded region, I mean the original blue region here. Remember this original blue region had an area of 16 and two thirds. So we're trying to adjust this value so that the area of the red rectangle is also 16 and two thirds. So whatever value gives us that equality of those areas, that will be the average value of the function. Now, why is this? Well, if we call this the average value is a, notice if we multiply both sides by b minus a, we get a times b minus a is equal to this integral. And the value of this integral is the area of that blue shaded region. The value of this, the a, that would be the height of that red line times the b minus a, this will be the area of that red rectangle. Okay, the area of that re rectangle, this is the length and this is the height of that rectangle. This is the area of that blue shaded region. So the A is actually the exact value that we need that would make this area equal this area. But how do we compute the average value? Well, we just do the definite integral and then divide by B minus A. So to find the average value, we'll call it A, it's gonna be one over B minus A times the integral from A to B of F of X DX. Now let's plug in the specific numbers that we have here. This is one over three minus a negative two, and that's gonna be five. That's the length of that interval from minus two to three is five. Times the integral from minus two to three of X squared plus one DX. So what we get is one fifth times this integral. Now we could do this integral just like we did before. We actually already found the value of this integral. You, you do the antiderivative, remember, and, and this is the antiderivative, and we're gonna evaluate from minus two to three. But remember, we already did this, and so what we're gonna end up getting is one-fifth of this value, and this value was 50 over three. Remember, 16 and two-thirds. And if we simplify this, well, 50 over five is 10. This is really 10 thirds or 3.3 repeating. Okay, so to find the average value of this function, what we did was we calculated the integral of the function. Okay, we ended up getting 50 over three, and we divide by the length of this interval. So we divide by five, or in other words, we multiply by one fifth, right? That's the same thing as dividing by five. So we take our 16 and two thirds and divide by five, and we end up getting this three and one third. So what that means over here is that the height of this should be 
at 3.33. That's the exact height that's going to make the area of this red shaded rectangle the, the same as the area of the blue shaded region. So 3.3 repeating, or 10 thirds, is the average value of this function. 